On these two problems, you want to use Descartes' rule of signs to determine the possible amount of positive real roots, negative real roots, and imaginary roots for each function. And we want to create a chart to show our results. So this is going to help us when we eventually try to find the zeros. This is going to give us an idea of the scenarios we're going to be walking into. So it will narrow down the amount of choices we have. So to use Descartes' rule of signs, you start from the highest degree term and you count down each degree and see if there's a sign change or not and you count that. So it starts out with a positive x cubed to a negative 6x squared. Did it change sign? Yes. Then from a negative to a positive, did it change sign? Yes. And from a positive to a negative, did it change sign? Yes. So that means there's three, possibly three positive zeros or move down by an even number. So keep moving down by two. So three or one positive zeros for this function. Then we want to come up with f of negative x. We get that by plugging in negative x for each one of the x's. Now, we don't have to actually do that each time because the effect of plugging in negative x is that only the odd degree terms actually change signs. You can see positive x cubed changed to negative x cubed, while the negative 6x squared stayed the same. The positive 13x changed to negative 13x because that's odd degree, and the constant term stayed the same. Now we want to count the sign changes in f of negative x just like we did in f of x. So it starts out negative to a negative. Is that a sign change? No. Negative to a negative. Is that a sign change? No. Negative to a negative. No sign change. So that means there's zero negative zeros uh, for this function. That's good. So when we go to find the zeros, we know not to look for any negative ones because none exist. So now we want to make a chart of all the possibilities for zeros for this function. So first thing we want to do with our PNI chart, positive, negative, and imaginary zeros, is figure out what the degree is, which is 3, because that means that there, there are 3 total zeros for this function. So each column should add up to 3. So let's go through all the possibilities. There could be 3 positive and no negative, or there could be 1 positive and no negatives. So those are the only two cases. So how many imaginary does that leave for each case? Well, in this first column, it's got to add up to 3. So that means it already adds up to 3, so there's no room for imaginary. This column adds up to 1, so that means there's room for 2 imaginary. Now, you should never have an odd number in the imaginary row because imaginary zeros always have to come in pairs. So that's a clue if you have an odd here that you made a mistake along the way. Let's move on to this next example and try Descartes. So let's count the number of sign changes here. Starts out negative to a negative, no sign change. Negative to a negative, no sign change. Negative to a positive, yes. So there's one positive zero. I know that for sure. So that's good information for me. So when I go to find zeros, I know there is definitely going to be exactly one positive zero to find. So then we want to come up with f of negative x again. And you can see, once again, only the odd degree terms actually change signs. So the negative 2x cubed changed to positive, and the negative 8x changed to positive. Every other sign stayed the same. So let's count the number of sign changes over here again. Negative to a positive, that's a change sign, yes. Positive to a positive, no. Positive to a positive, no. So that means there's exactly one negative zero here. So this is really useful. I know there's exactly one positive zero and exactly one negative zero. So that means there's only one case that could happen with this uh, function over here. So how many total zeros on this function? Well, what's the degree? Four. So four total zeros. So that means each column has to add to four. But there's only going to be one column here because there's only one situation Descartes presents for us, so that there's one positive and one negative zero in which case that there are going to be, because each column has to add to four, two imaginary zeros. And this is the case. So Descartes really narrowed this down for us. We know there's exactly one positive and exactly one negative zero here. And then after that, we're going to have two imaginary zeros. So this is going to be all part of the picture when we actually try to find all the zeros of each function. Let's look at Descartes' rule of signs.